Ashley, I'm detecting increased volcanic activity. There's a dense ash cloud coming our way. The ash cloud is upon us. Visibility is down and air temperature is up. You wouldn't want to breathe this. Solar panels are disabled as well. The ash clouds have dispersed now. Air visibility is back to normal.
I'm sensing slight tremors. They are intensifying over time. It looks like an earthquake is coming. It's an earthquake. It's going to seriously damage all buildings near its epicenter. The earthquake is over. The tremors are getting weaker and weaker. We should quickly repair whatever's been damaged. We've gathered enough samples to study these cryoplants in our alien research laboratory. Let's do this as soon as possible. If we can learn to replicate this effect, then we should be able to move freely around this biome. Perfetto amici e amiche, si ritorna al quartier generale, vediamo se riusciamo a scoprire il titanio. Comunque questo video sarà molto breve, eh.
tracking strange behavior within Galatea's asteroid belt. One of the smaller objects that have been orbiting the planet has recently changed its trajectory. What's strange about that? Galatea is a relatively young planet and has lots of moons and smaller rocks in its orbit. I have not detected any collisions in this object's vicinity or any other force that could affect its movement. It is also heading straight for our headquarters. It should be flying over our position at any moment now. Okay, you've got my attention. Let's track this meteor and see where it lands. The meteorite has landed near our position. I am detecting increased radiation in a very broad emission spectrum. That was not a typical rock. I'm intrigued. Let's get to that impact location as soon as possible. The meteorite created a vast crater. The ground has a strange blue glow in this place. Is this Cherenkov radiation? That's possible. I am receiving conflicting readings. Ashley, please move closer to the center of the crater and use the geoscanner to gather more data from the debris. Okay, is this enough? Affirmative, Ashley. The remains of this meteorite are emitting huge amounts of dark energy waves. They are off the charts. That's very odd. What can you tell me about the impactor's composition? It was too small to contain enough dark matter to cause such emissions. It was almost completely obliterated when it hit the ground. The dust that remains is primarily composed of heavy metal elements. Era. Some of the readings are changing. How is that possible? My apparatus is broken, or the sample is unstable. It appears as if some of the heavier atoms are quickly decaying into lighter ones, while others are fusing into heavier elements. That's nonsense. Such behavior is not possible. That would cause a giant fusion explosion. Nothing could contain so much energy in a stable state. You are correct, Ashley. However, we still cannot explain the dark energy emissions from this debris. 
That's true. We also can't explain why this meteor decided to land right next to our base. That's too odd to be a coincidence. Are there any more objects in Galatea's orbit with similar composition? Yes. There is a number of similar objects orbiting the planet. They have been here since before we arrived. They have different composition than most of the planet's surface. Most of the planet's surface? Is there an area on the planet with similar composition as those meteors? Yes. Our initial planetary scans have mapped a large valley that looks like an ancient impact crater on one of the continents. Its resonance spectrum indicated large quantities of heavy metals. This area does not seem to contain any resources that are required to construct the rift station, so it was not marked as important. The meteor that landed here must be a fragment of some larger object that collided with Galatea a long time ago, and as a result, created that crater. Mr. Riggs, can you chart rift jump coordinates to that metallic valley? Affirmative, Ashley. Okay, let's go there as soon as possible. A new technology has been developed. New blueprints are available for crafting.
Research completed. Jump successful. Radiation is above normal, but within safety limits. Amazing. This place looks like a completely different planet. The plants and rocks look like they've been fused with the heavy metals that are so abundant here. I am detecting regular dark energy wave pulses. It is difficult to assess where they originate from. I need some time to gather more readings. Okay, Mr. Riggs. In the meantime, we can walk around and explore the area. Are these dragonflies? They have metallic wings and reinforced carapaces, but the majority of their bodies is organic. This is very odd. Watch out for this species, Ashley. It looks very aggressive and can fly over terrain obstacles. Abbiamo trovato il cobalto, cobalto, sapete che serve sempre tantissimo per fare torrette al 3 e tutto, io non so quanto di massimale, però non ce l'abbiamo sull'estrazione del cobalto. Devo stare qua mezzo, guarda che non lo vuole. A new technology has been developed. New buildings are available for construction.
finished analyzing the dark energy wave patterns. There are at least a few strong emitters within this area. I have marked the location of the strongest one on your map. We should go there first. Okay. This valley looks alien on an alien planet. Let's see what we can find here. Is this a drone or a creature? It doesn't look natural. These flying round creatures are biomechanical hybrid organisms. However, I would not classify them as typical cyborgs. I cannot see a clear distinction between organic and mechanical parts. All of their elements function perfectly together. They either evolved this way or they've been bioengineered. Both options are equally disturbing. Let's see what other curiosities we can find here. construction in progress. This building is a local version of our headquarters. It will allow me to reconstruct whenever I am destroyed. And it has a permanent rift station that we can rift jump to at any time. It will also allow us to automatically transfer all of the resources that are mined in this location back to our HQ, even if we're not present in this location. We can construct a network of such outposts around the planet to build up our economy. It's the only way to acquire enough resources to construct the rift station and all of its components. Be mindful of where we place these buildings, though. Our headquarters have a capacity limit of how many outposts we can support at once. So whenever there is no use for an outpost, we should deconstruct it and recycle the resources that were used to build it.
these structures. These aren't natural. They must have been made by an advanced civilization. I can even see some wreckage. Are these remnants of an ancient native civilization, or has someone visited this planet before us? This raises so many questions. Ashley, this is a very significant discovery. It could change the classification of our entire mission to Galatea 37. We need to conduct a thorough analysis of these objects. You know the procedures. I know. Secure the area. Construct a research station near the archaeological site. Assess if the find poses any threat to the expedition. Affirmative. These should be our immediate goals here. What about the dark energy wave emissions that we were tracking? Are they coming from these ruins? No. The source of these emissions seems to be hidden behind the alien structures, somewhere within that crater. Okay. As soon as we finish analyzing these structures, we'll need to find a way inside there. The research station is under construction. I am detecting movement in the planet's orbit. This cannot be a coincidence. We should prepare to defend this site. This doesn't look well. If something is purposefully controlling objects in the sky, then we might be dealing with an active presence of an alien civilization. I'm starting to get worried about this. Don't worry, Ashley. Get prepared. Warning! I'm detecting a fast-moving horde of creatures heading towards our outpost. An attack is imminent. Palm rabbit species must be related to the flying laser eye bradron creatures. They share a lot of common characteristics and have very similar internal organ structure. Their metallic evil twin has been bioengineered to grow metallic shell that serves as protective armor, and their huge eye was modified to function as a mining tool or weapon. Base is under attack.
A new technology has been developed. New buildings are available for construction. under attack. Blueprints are available for crafting. station is halfway through gathering data.
under attack. Research station has finished analyzing the alien artifacts. These structures were indeed created by an advanced civilization. They are old, but they're too young to be of native origin. They're composed of very dense, heavy element alloys. The wreckage in front of the tall alien pillars appears to be some kind of a pump or a refinery. It has visible intake valves, and we found traces of morphium inside it. This liquid behaves in a similar way to the meteorite debris that we analyzed near our HQ. It is a mixture of heavy element atoms that rapidly change state and morph interchangeably into lighter or heavier elements. How is this liquid stable? Why doesn't it explode? We've never seen anything like this. Our sensors cannot explain these phenomena. However, we are detecting dark energy wave emissions from this liquid. Dark matter and dark energy are just vague terms that we use to describe unknown forms of both. That means that there's something more inside or around the liquid that we cannot see or interact with. That's probably the thing that drives and stabilizes these morphing reactions. I propose we call this substance morphium. A fitting name. It looks like there is a pool of morphium nearby. Maybe this wreckage was initially connected to it. That would make sense. Let's connect it back and see what happens. Is our pipeline system going to be able to transport this substance? Of course. It's been designed to handle plasma, supercoolants, or even molten magma. It can transport practically anything. Okay then. Let's place a pipe in this pool of morphium and connect it to the alien structure near our research station. Technology has been developed. New blueprints are available for crafting. working. What is it doing? The ground is being covered with metal plates. They're replicating. The barrier that was guarding the entrance to the crater has just been assimilated by that metal surface. Was that a gate left here on purpose? The dark energy emissions are coming from within that crater. Let's go inside. The structures inside this crater are amazing. They are very old and damaged, but they give me the feeling as if they could come back to life at any moment. The dark energy readings are strongest at the center of this crater. Something powerful was here, but there is not much left. These aliens must have been able to manipulate unknown forms of dark matter and dark energy. The morphium liquid looks like some kind of power source. It provides both matter and energy to their structures. 
Would it be possible to replicate some of this technology without fully understanding how it works? Yes. The research station scanned the alien structure thoroughly, and our printer drones can replicate it with minor modifications. If we connect it to a morphium pipeline, it will operate. Based on initial analysis, the structure that opened the gate to this crater has multiple purposes. It is a defensive tower, but it also covers the ground around itself with a metallic surface. This influence area assimilates most smaller objects that it touches and serves as a power generator. It probably served additional purposes for the aliens, but we don't know enough about that. These towers will not require an additional energy supply, nor AI cores to operate. This can prove very useful if we can find more pools of morphium. It could make securing remote bases very easy because we could have the morphium towers up very quickly without the need to set up AI centers and a full power grid for them. We could also research a crude way of transforming morphium into a power source and build morphium power plants. A new technology has been developed. New buildings are available for construction. That's interesting as well. Before we venture out further, it looks like it would be a good idea to set up a solid outpost in this area. There's a lot of ironium and cobalt in this valley. We should take advantage of that. That is a very good idea, Ashley. As soon as we've secured a solid outpost, we should investigate the remaining dark energy wave emitters I detected in this area. I have marked their approximate locations on your map. Some of the hostile creatures that are present in this biome are capable of traversing over canyons and lakes. We have to take that under consideration when placing our defenses. Remember to secure our base from all sides. We've finished researching Ferdinite handling. The results are amazing. This mineral will allow us to craft entirely new equipment and weapons of extreme quality. The only problem is that we need to find more of this resource. Mr. Riggs, can you search for large condensations of the entwined Ferdinite crystals using the orbital scanner? Roger that, Ashley. I have located a potentially Ferdinite rich location. The rift jump coordinates are marked on the orbital scatter interface. Sunlight is a bit dimmed in this metallic valley, and there's a lot of strong wind currents. The weather is a bit more volatile here. I think it would make more sense to build wind turbines in this biome. However, we should back them up with a lot of energy storage capacity to mitigate the changing weather conditions. Bella lì, amici e amiche, ci vediamo al prossimo episodio. Sì, che intanto ha fatto un sacco di cose. E grazie per aver visto il video. Ci vediamo alla prossima. Save game. Alla prossima. Con il mitico The Rift Breaker. Marco Drums Games. Mi raccomando, seguire il mio canale. Portate gente. E ci vediamo al prossimo video. Ciao.